welcome you two friends and family to today's edition of the Wellness Homesteader. So it's about 1.30 here on Wednesday. I was going to just skip my Thursday video for the week, but actually I have something kind of on my heart that I wanted to share with you. So while I'm working on boxing up, yes, I'm still boxing up soap orders, I thought that I would just share with you a couple thoughts. So this is a time of the year when we get really busy. And if you're a type A person, an overachiever, a worrier, or just someone who tends to want everything to be perfect in spite of knowing that it probably won't be, this video is for you. So, I don't know if I can do two things at once. It's kind of <laughs> contradictory to what I'm about to say. But let me just share with you something that happened to me recently that made me think about doing this video. So y'all know, if you've been part of my channel for very long, y'all know Jasper. And I talk to Jasper every single day. <laughs> and although Jasper is younger even than my son, um, she's just one of those people that we definitely hit it off as friends from day one. And she is a very, very kind soul. And she also is a very wise person. So back to the fact that we video chat. And we video chat because, you know, we can do um, clothes trying on, which outfit looks better. <laughs> Or just, hey, did I show you this or that? You know, there's all kinds of reasons. Plus, it's a lot easier than sometimes what I have to say in a text. That can get a little bit lengthy sometimes. Pardon me. So the other morning, we're chatting. And I'm actually brushing my teeth while I'm talking to her. So I'm foaming at the mouth. I'm talking through the toothbrush. But I'm like, I have just got so much stuff to do. I need to be like brushing my teeth while I'm talking to her. And, you know, that's really when what I'm about to say hit me. And that is we neglect our own self-care at times when things get busy in life. So maybe it's the holidays. As I sit here multitasking, let me finish this. Maybe it's the holidays that have you feeling overwhelmed. Maybe it's your cat. Oh, he's, he's, he's just playing with this toy. Let me see if he wants to say hello. Do you want to say hi to the peoples? Do you want to say hi? Do you got your Santa hat? Yes, you love it, don't you? He's your friend. Is it your friend, Frankie? <laughs> He's on a bit of a catnip high, guys. You'll have to excuse him. <laughs> okay, let me go back over here. What I want to do is I want to encourage you all to take time for some self-care. And self-care isn't necessarily getting your hair done or getting your nails done. And I do all of that myself. Um, it may be something as simple as taking time to do things that bring you joy and enjoyment, like take a bubble bath, read a good book, listen to an audible book. Whatever that item is that helps you to relax, to center yourself, to not be so outwardly focused on all of the chaos that can happen with the holidays. I just wanna encourage you to do that. One of the reasons I think I am so attracted to vintage clothing, uh, 50s and 60s vintage time, is simply because in my mind, and yes, I was a child in the 60s, it was a simpler time. Now, we didn't have the modern conveniences that we have today, but we also did not have YouTube. We didn't have social media to keep up with. Um, our possessions and homes were in general smaller, less elaborate, a little easier to take care of. So I think sometimes I long for that slower pace and slowed down regime day to day. 
and it's really up to me to do that. So last night, instead of making the video like I should have, <laughs> I had to take my mom to the eye doctor today. And taking my mom anywhere, y'all, is kind of like taking a group of kindergartners on a field trip. <laughs> and I don't mean any disrespect to my mom, but it is a whole thing. I mean, it is a whole thing. So you would think after I've been doing this for her for 10 years, you would think I would be a little better at it, but um, yeah, it's always sort of chaotic. So last night, instead of making a video, I took the time to wash my hair. And although you can't tell it, guys, I did wet set my hair on curlers. Um, it didn't get dry overnight. I've got a lot of hair. So trying to get all of that dry doesn't always happen. So pff, the curl fell out, but that's okay. Uh, I did my nails. I watched some of my favorite YouTube and I went to bed early. And you know, it's exactly what I needed to kind of quiet my heart a little bit and help me not feel like I have to be everything and do everything all at once today, right now, and brush my teeth while I'm doing a video. <laughs> so I want to share with you just a quick little thought. Um, not today, obviously, but I am going to start a new series because it's something that I really enjoy and I think it will be a lot of fun. It won't be every week but I want to start doing Throwback Thursday. So I have a lot of vintage things, vintage appliances, um, vintage gadgets that I thought it would be fun for us to try them out together. So we're gonna do a little bit of that today, but it's not gonna be a full on history of, because you know what, I didn't do my research. So I'm going to be sharing a appliance with you from the 1950s and I'm going to try to it won't all be 50s but it will be kind of mid-century stuff and just share some nice memories with you and maybe some helpful tips so let me finish packaging this last order and then we are going to check out my 1950s colormatic percolator stay tuned okay Let's get into talking about our first Throwback Thursday appliance, and that is the Miro, M-I-R-R-O, and this is Colormatic. They had the Miromatic percolator, but this is a Colormatic because of the beautiful color. It's supposed to be pink. It's kind of uh, orangey pink, but I think it's quite lovely. And I actually purchased this off eBay, and it has, really pretty embossing, which you're not gonna be able to see due to the reflection. So sort of that mid-century modern look. And if you've ever watched I Love Lucy, Lucy poured Ricky coffee from a Miromatic. So it was just the plain aluminum. And you've heard me mention the word Miro before because they also made a lot of aluminum products, including aluminum trees. So I'm gonna try to kill two birds with one stone here. I shared on my Azure Standard Hall that I purchased the Ground Organic Love Buzz full blend of full city and French roast, dark and velvety smooth. So I'm gonna transfer that into a jar for maximum freshness. And speaking of jars, guys, I was in Walmart last weekend, could not believe my eyes, lids, rings, jars galore for days so hopefully this will all fit in i usually will take uh, well this is going to be a challenge i may have to uh, shimmy and shake the jar a little bit you know as soon as we think things are impossibly not going to be in stock they're in stock one of the lids I like to use for my coffee is the Ball Leak Proof, and this happens to be a white bath jar. Let me grab my coffee scoop here. And yes, I have a fancy Jura coffee maker, <laughs> but there's something 
so self-indulgent about making a cup of coffee in a percolator. So one of the reasons I enjoy a percolator is I remember my grandma making coffee and she had a stovetop, a non-electric one, and she would let that thing boil and boil and boil and boil till that coffee would speak to you. <laughs> so I'm not trying to make coffee that will speak to me, but it's okay if it talks a little bit. I like my coffee strong. So what is a percolator like? I've already put water in, but inside you have this little device. So the tube goes over the heating element and it will draw the water up into this lidded, um, the basket lid, which has holes in it. And you put your coffee grounds in here. So, wow, the coffee smells delicious. I will tell you when I first got this, I tried using a coarser grind, which is often what's recommended. Guys, it was weak as water. And I mean, it was really weak. Like even for like a normal person, it was weak. So I am going to load up here. Now, when you're buying a vintage item like this, one caution I will have for you is that the electrical systems and cords did not have the same safeguards. So be aware of that. So I'm gonna put the lid back on the basket. And that was my hair. <laughs> and the lid back on. And let me show you here, I'll hold it up. This is a cloth covered cord and it just has a switch on the base here. So I am gonna plug her in. And I also didn't share the handle on this is Bakelite. So a very old type plastic. I'm gonna switch it to on. And what I find is it takes about 15 minutes. I will bring you back to show you what the brew looks like. And we'll also do a taste test of this new coffee. And just for fun, guys, I pulled this up on my iPad. Oh, go back. Ugh, sorry, a really cool ad. It says Miromatic electric percolator, completely automatic. Pardon me, just plug it in. There's nothing more to do. Starts perking in 30 seconds. So if you can hear, it's already starting to heat. Stops automatically when the coffee is done. Keeps coffee hot for hours, and guys, it does. Spectacular performance with utmost simplicity. The Miromatic electric percolator has the same sturdy construction and finish that you would naturally expect to find in any Ah, uh, this is a blurry. Any something bearing the Miro name. You can get it at department, house furnishings, and hardware stores, wherever dealers sell the finest aluminum. So, it was only $12.95, guys. How cool is that ad? Very cool. So, we're gonna put the percolator to the test. We're going to test our organic Love Buzz coffee and I'll bring you back. We'll pour a cup and I'll give you my honest review of this coffee and the Miro, the Colormatic Percolator. Stay tuned. I wanted to bring you back and show you in the little clear glass dome, you can see the coffee bubbling and I'm gonna be quiet a moment so that you can hear the percolator perking. So not super noisy. And when it's finished, it will simply stop bubbling here and you'll know it's time to pour. I'll bring you back there. Our percolator has stopped. So I'm going to use my a very cute non-vintage Santa mug. Right, let's give it a pour. Ooh, it looks nice, looks dark and rich. I may be up all night. Very good. It is smooth. It definitely puts me in the mind of a French roast. But it doesn't have, a lot of times percolated coffee can have a bitter taste to it. But this, guys, delish. So, highly recommend the, oh my gosh, I, the Organic Love Bite Bug. 
<laughs> coffee. <laughs> I'm so bad with names. Hold on. Well, I was completely wrong, guys. Okay, the organic Love Buzz coffee, equal exchange, fair trade coffee that I purchased from Azure Standard. I know it's also available on Amazon if you don't have Azure available uh, in your area. As far as the coffee maker, the percolator, let me give it a rating. Appearance, guys, how cute is this? I wish you could see the engraving. Let me try one more time. Ah, there you can kind of see. It has swirls up here and then like a big swirl on each side. Love the color, love the handle, love the stylized um, lines of the coffee maker. So on a scale of one to 10, I would give it a 10 for appearance. Function, does it do what it says it's going to do? It absolutely does. It brews coffee very, very quickly. Um, not as quickly as the Jura, but it is so very, very quiet. I like that part about it. Um, would I recommend it? I absolutely would. My only point of caution, again, make sure your plug is safe. If not, replace it. Um, read your listings carefully if you're uh, not seeing the item in person. But this is an item that I would definitely repurchase. I don't need more than one percolator, but it looks lovely as a piece of decor and it's something I enjoy a lot. So I do have a favor to ask of all of you. Could you drop me a comment below? What do you think of having some Throwback Thursdays thrown in now and again to review some of these vintage type appliances? You know, I don't wanna take the channel too far away from homesteading, wellness, prepping, those type things. However, you know, during the winter, I have less gardening to do, less canning, less prepping, um, because I am well stocked for the winter. I'll still be bringing you some videos along that vein, even though it is winter. We'll definitely be doing some winter canning, but I also like putting in some fun things that I have interest in. So if you would drop me a comment below, let me know what you think about having some Throwback Thursdays. And I have a second favor to ask you while you're commenting. <clears throat> I've had a few of you ask if I would share some of my vintage patterns. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I will definitely do that. Uh, I am working on some projects. I just completed a vintage hostess apron for Christmas that I will share in another video. But if you would like to see some sewing or uh, vintage pattern information videos, we'll leave that in the comments below as well. I know not everyone is a seamstress, but could still be of interest. Go ahead and smash the like button, hit the subscribe, ring the bell, do all the things. Share this video with someone who you know might remember percolators from the 1950s and enjoy seeing an authentic, colormatic mirror percolator. So as always, be healthy, be well, be blessed, and I will see you all on Saturday. Take care.